Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Julia. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm glad that we have this opportunity to talk together mm -hmm. about um, what it means to be makers in this world, mm -hmm. to be interested in creative, generative action in the midst of so many things happening. Yeah. Um, recently, you've shared some highlights on social media mm -hmm. about painting from the edges. Yeah. <laughs> and, and looking at the edges of things. And I wonder if you could expand on that a little bit in this time we have oh, together. No, it was uh, really great to <clears throat> look back, you know, as, as, as you end the year and begin the new one, you kind of have the opportunity to look back. So I was scrolling back on my feed and uh, videos that we, you know, we took um, in 2020 popped up and I had never sh shared that with it um, on social media, I don't think. And uh, um, it was just a reminder of how the process matters. Um, and you you were in the room, uh, in, a, in a Pasadena studio. So um, the, it was also thinking that, you know, our co connections uh, today, you know, it's hopefully more than just social media and the fact that you were physically present in that room recording what I was doing and being able to almost have a conversational style, um, you know, talking about what I'm doing, which which I don't normally articulate, you know, to even, even to myself. So um, it, it was a reminder of, um perhaps reflecting on what i'm actually doing and articulating it um it, it can be helpful um i am doing that exactly that in in writing right now i'm writing my second book with yale university press and um this one is is called uh, a journey into the light and it's it's a journey of thinking like an artist walking into the studio every day and um you know really revealing more of what i do just every day um and write about it so that video done in 2020 um i'll put a link to this feed but um that you know you were present and you took that video with me so um and what happens is at the end you know you kind of focused on the edges <laughs> right um and which is always fascinating to me how these margins and peripheral areas that we perhaps don't see it you know as as, as the main theme um reveal so much more about the actual painting you're doing or actual work and and thought processes it's very similar in writing um many times you're writing with a stated thesis or goal and this book as well turned out to be something that was more peripheral um in my journey my process of making art but also thinking about art um and a good editor will kind of push you and ask you like, oh, you know, you wrote this, um, almost a throwaway line, you know, but can you elaborate on that, right? So I start to think about what did I mean? And edges are often the part um, that we perhaps take it for granted or we don't pay attention to it but often reveal a lot about our creative process and, and even, even the message of what we want to convey. Mm -hmm. And I remember that day in the studio so distinctly because what happened with the material was also distinct. Yeah. You were talking about it yeah. um, and realized this is doing something I've never seen happen before. <laughs> right. 
like um and you said I normally go this way and this yeah. one I have to go this way yeah <laughs> and so be in that continued conversation as it yeah. were yeah and that was great um uh, you know those those things happen and uh I think when I was younger I used to be afraid of those things you know like uh some some kind of um surprise element breaking into the surface that you're working on and um and and all of a sudden it takes a direction of its own right and um and then I slowly realized that that's what the work is about <laughs> you know um you you're supposed to be a vehicle through which the work itself can express it you know its own meaning or uh, every every work has a every work has an integrity of its own and there is um language that you're just peering into when you begin the work and in this case we're using silver and um uh, I, I, you know i was about to uh while it's wet um distress the silver on the surface and Susie Barra had just visited and we were talking about how how percussive that sounds so I think it was the next morning or something you you were in the studio helping me so um so we were um able to capture that and what it captures is actually not just the technique of distressing silver but this improvised sense of what happens on the surface when uh, you let it uh, dictate what uh, the surface is uh, asking <laughs> um, or maybe uh, even uh, insisting um, that it will um, carry you into and um, it's it's I over over the years I had so many instances where that has produced some of the most memorable work um, and so I now I actually I look for that um, in my work. Uh, I know I, I call it listening to your work, but you know it's it's really anticipating that something may come out in this particular material, particular time. And yes, when I was distressing silver, I know I noticed how maybe it was the surface drying in a certain way, but it had a direction, you know, and if you were doing some some work that is more static or predetermined, um, perhaps you would ignore that or push through it. Um, but I felt uh, it was important, especially for that work, to um, um, to remain faithful <laughs> to uh, the direction that it was giving. And another little caveat is. I have the actual finished piece, which my daughter Lydia saw when she was helping, uh, because I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I could not be there to clean up. Um, she, um, is, you know, texted me and said, "Dad, what is this painting? It's beautiful, you know." And and usually when she <laughs> says that, you know, because she wants it in her <laughs> space, and I was like, "Okay, you can, you can." take it with you um and then she's now in autumn and um for Christmas I got to see them and the painting was there and I was looking at it and actually the entire painting is screaming at the direction that you know um uh, we were capturing on that moment uh, morning except it it, it 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 you can't see it now it's it's if if you had seen the video and seen the final product, which I will post next, um, you can kind of see it, but you wouldn't think of it as as a main direction or impetus, and and it turns out to be very important. It's the echo, yeah. as it were, like yeah. the continuing of the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's something that's profound about that. There's a mystery to it that we we can't really uh, anticipate or even plan. Um, and and when you're doing layered work, um, you know when you, when you're live painting as 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 you do, Julia. You know when you when you're responding one to one 
with the materials um you know there, there's there's always something happening that um is a surprise element yeah something that i've been reflecting on a lot in my personal practice is the voices of my teachers mm -hmm. and what lessons they gave to me mm -hmm. and i wonder if you have specific lessons from past teachers past mentors that you can point to and be like this is what i learned from that i mean uh, you're always learning from your materials yeah. but what are some of the other messages that got integrated along the way mm. Mm. that you're like that's part of my foundation in this yeah that's a great question and I can tell you so many times when my teachers or mentors notice things that are obvious to me that I didn't really think was important, you know. And um, there was this one time in uh, printmaking class, uh, um, my professor was looking at a whole bunch of things I've done. You know, it was it was there was a January break, so I, I spent the whole month producing these images. And some of them were etching, some of them were monotypes, you know, um, so they were just one image um, uh, using uh, printing press to uh, press into uh, uh, kind of ghost images and you build up on that. And she <laughs> looked at one image that was really on the peripheral. Uh, I, I had, um, it's almost, almost like a test plate you know, that I did. And it had this gesture on it because I, I wanted some movement. And I wasn't really thinking that I would create something out of it. Um, it was just to see how the um, aqua tint worked and, you know, how much acid to use and so forth. And she said, you know, this is absolutely beautiful. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's not really the one that I would try, you know, that I was hoping to show you. <laughs> but then we had this discussion about it how sometimes you know we don't know what we're doing but our hands know better and I have um those experiences often and and when we were collaborating uh Susie Barra and I you know doing these live paintings and live per percussion performances oftentimes she would notice things that you know, I, I have learned to value um, that um, happens just naturally in, in the course of working together. But um, the, and, and it wouldn't it would not be like, you know, she would not say, like, pay attention to that. But but she would comment on something that I, 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 I was not thinking about, you know, and and oftentimes those give you cues and and i think that's why we need community you know we need community to journey with um and there are sojourners stewarding the moment together and this journey together really allows for um great you know greater awareness of um, what perhaps we will take for granted and so it um, many many times I and and when I um, you know get to critique uh, a class or something you know I I always pay attention to the palette you know <laughs> um, that students have and and um, it's it's amazing because every palette is different and every palette has distinct patterns of that artist's. Um, you know, literally fingerprints and <laughs> literally, um, uh, you know, paint colors, different colors. But I always put the palette next to the painting, right? And and say, which one is more you? <laughs> and inevitably, it's the palette. It it's this unconscious, intuitive, you know, throwaway or maybe maybe a discarded remains of what you've created that says more about you than the painting that the student is trying to make and and i i think a lot of times we forget that how much 
we do casually or we do uh, just as a way to get to something can reveal something very deeply and meaningful about us. And uh, so th those things I have noticed uh, myself paying attention to. <laughs> yeah, because there's the the working towards the goal of a completed image. Mm -hmm. And there's everything that gets carved away in pursuit of that. Right. right. Fulfilled idea. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, uh, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, you know, I mean, you're looking at my studio and, and I was, you know, painting this humongous painting in the back. But what I noticed was the floor, you know, and, and, and I took some photos this morning of the floor because it, it actually captures the remnant captures the kind of angst and even anger that I felt about what was happening, uh, you know, in, in Israel and Gaza, especially, and, um, and how we tend to bifurcate and narrate and divide and, you know, and, and all of that, um, create wars out of these, these polarized divides and, actually they're connected right or everything is connected so what's happening um you know in in halfway across the world matters and when you're intuiting the entire thing you you end up uh, somehow riding on um certain uh, stories on you know the way that um you know i would say the spirit is speaking to you and oftentimes it's it, it's it's the flow that captures it, you know, and um, it, it's just fascinating to me how that happens. Yesterday, I cleaned the table that I normally yeah. paint on because so much had built up on it yeah. that it, it yeah. was affecting the surface yeah. and thus affecting the paper that was laying on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it's this. Um, and wiping it all away wiping the yeah. salt literal salt crust away yeah, yeah. wow that's your process yeah um yeah 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 both both, um, both the taking away right you know and and of course preparing for the new painting but the fact that what you took away is in itself you know some, some it says something about the process and and the paintings that you have done and so while it's ephemeral and it doesn't it's not permanent it can tell us a lot about what we're trying to do and I really it's a teacher of um uh, how artists can move into the next stage and in light of all of the things happening, how how do you find ways to speak in your work? Mm. Um, what is that coming to that, that process been like for you? Yeah, so that's been really interesting uh, because I'm writing about that process at the same time I'm painting. Um, I am more highly attuned and uh, you know aware um, of even the discrepancy right between what I am doing here and the things that I'm concerned about in the world um and you know typical struggle is is to know how, I mean why why does it matter at all you know that we create these paintings here and does it have any kind of you know way of either correcting what is what is prob problematic in the world or the violence and atrocities that are taking place. And uh, while, you know, there's no answer to that, um, I just wrote a piece for this month Culture Care Newsletter, um, which I will post a link to, <laughs> um, because I, I felt like it's really important to address this false binaries that we create all the time. And 
I do it. It's it's not in judgment of anybody else. It's just something that we are very prone to do um, to make sense of the world, right? So, you know, and by doing so, we scapegoat the problem to the enemy, as it were, to say, well, this is what's wrong with the world, you know, eliminate this and we can, you know, <laughs> we'll be happier when that's not true at all, right? The, the very thought of demonizing somebody else is the mirror of what we are fighting against. So we are defined by the enemy in a sense, if we do that, right? And I, I had to think through this after 9-11, you know, being a survivor of 9-11 and living in ground zero, every day was a challenge to rethink of the false binaries that the world was creating and I was creating myself. And art somehow doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, it has its own uh, language is much more complex than this binary black and white, we versus them, um, you know, left versus the right. I mean, it, 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 it makes no sense for an artist to speak that way. Um, it's possible that art can be, you know, uh, a way to um, a way to be an activist of some sort and a way to even be a propaganda of some sort. I, it's possible, but but the you know no, the medium of art, whether it be words or uh, your body and dance or um, you know paint, uh, it is far more complex and more nuanced and far more mysterious than what our minds will create uh, in terms of binaries. And, and, and so we, we are forced to create something that cannot by definition <laughs> answer that question, right? Who's right and who's wrong. Um, but at the same time, we create a language that enriches our conversation in and allow the mystery of of whatever it is that we're dealing with to coexist even like opposing views can coexist um you know and and that allows us i think uh a mind to not only be enriched but uh, develop this capacity to understand complexity and understand even violence in a in a different way so how we respond as artists what difference does it make? It makes a huge difference <laughs> because the world needs to see the world as perhaps an artist can see the world. Uh, you know, entry, complexity, mystery, and and contemplative language uh, rather than knee jerk, you know, uh, reaction of um, defending your turf or um, you know being being the aggressor of of uh, you know territorial uh, battles. And so, it, you know, I, I, I've been thinking and writing about uh, all of that as, as we navigate. I hear you talking about, um, in a sense, the boundarylessness of mm -hmm. making. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. and it, it's in some ways, um, juxtaposed against the border stalker role, the boundary yeah. role right. of the artist. Right, yes. And the paradox of that really yeah. plays in my mind. Yeah, exactly. And if you are tribal uh, leaders trying to protect your tribe, artists will drive you crazy, right? <laughs> because we're always jumping the fence, going to the borderlands. And and then they're, they're like, you know, sometimes teenage sheep go with us, you know, like because they're curious. And, and oftentimes we're treated um, as these dangerous, you know, people who transgress, let's say, against the normative way. Um, but really what we're doing is is creating uh, a way to see the whole you know to um, to at least understand the borderlands uh, in between the tribal complex <laughs> right so we end up in in the median 
um, us can we can see both sides, let's say, and um, and you know I think cultural care argument is that the nourishment, cultural nourishment, um, is often in the margins, the borderlands, outside of the tribal norms, because what happens in a homogeneous tribal zones is that we run out of uh, you know nourishment very quickly um, because we focus on one thing and um, we we don't have the diversity to create abundance um, so that the yeah art intrinsically <laughs> breaks down those borders right and 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 it will make a lot of people uncomfortable you know, because of because of that. But one of the ways of looking at it is is to see how poverty of um, understand understanding of um, how we view the world and how we view, we view ourselves um, can lead to enormous conflicts. You know, and and misunderstanding of even even what we are about or the values that we hold dear. So how do we get out of that loop yeah and i guess that's that's the question that i pose to you now like how do you resist as it were like monocrop culture yeah as an as as yourself as a maker yourself yeah yeah how do you not fall into that singular this is what i have to do yeah, well, it's the impossible question of Jesus, right? <laughs> to love your enemies. <laughs> I mean, that, my goodness, when you think about that, and it is a real. Um, I, you know, I thought it would be a, not only an impossible question, but it's not a question that's tenable in uh, places like Ground Zero or, you know, Gaza today. Um, but I found that especially in in standing on the ashes you it's almost like you have no choice but to think about that because the alternative is to live in hatred and and you know live um, against something that you oppose <laughs> and i literally stood on ground zero in new york many times um, thinking that this is not a choice anymore for me because I have to learn to love, uh, first of all, myself, <laughs> uh, because when you're traumatized, that's kind of the last thing you ask is, is you know, how to take care of yourself. You're always pushing. And then you're obviously your family and your friends, your community, but that has to extend to, you know, people who are attacking us. Um, how do you do that? And and so my actually my last twenty years been been a journey of constantly pushing myself that uncomfortable question. Um, and in some ways, when you can ask that, the best is when you are literally standing on ashes of what happened, the devastation and the wasteland in front of you. And um, and that um, I, I, that's not an answer. It's really just um, an instinct toward something greater than what I can muster on my own. Yeah. And to that, I would say, may we all move towards an understanding of our common humanity. Yeah. Yeah, and what I call common curse, right? Um, which is part of common grace is common curse. Um, we, we, we are connected by everything, the pandemic, the violence, uh, the uncertainties for the future. And um, I think that's, what connects us more than if we were to say triumphant joy and happiness and 
winning, you know, um, we are all, in, uh, you know, mired in, in some kind of conflict and uh, untenable situation that is literally facing us today. And yet, because of that, we are connected, you know, um, and we're able to say, you know, every, every moment is a Genesis moment. Uh, we just have to learn to think uh, differently about um, our, our situation and um, encourage each other to create into that moment. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for sharing all of these reflections with me. It's always oh. good to be in conversation. It is. It is. Thank you, Julia.